Missy and I, we've been uh, happily married now for quite a while, and we both decided when we got married that we would not have friends of the opposite sex outside of work relationships, professional relationships. And I just encourage a young person, a married person, single person here today, set those kinds of boundaries up because they're very healthy in your life. If you set up a boundary and you stay away from it, if that's the boundary over there next to that speaker and I stay over here, I'm, I'm not playing with it, I'm not toying with it, and I keep a good, healthy relationship with my spouse, a good, healthy relationship with others, it makes it a whole lot better than getting over here and crossing that boundary because I've seen too many people cross that boundary, have that relationship with someone of the opposite sex that's not their spouse. The next thing you know, they're listening to them, they're crying on their shoulders, and it develops into something that it should never have been to begin with. It had those healthy boundaries been set up. Enough of that. That was extra. That don't cost you anything more today. That's just a little bit of wisdom thrown in there that you can, uh, you can take home and you can utilize and hopefully saves you a lot of pain in this life. But the, Jesus tells us about the most important commandment in these scriptures also before the story of the Good Samaritan. And we'll back up a little bit, verses 25 through 29, and let's read those and let's see what this religious expert was asking Jesus. One day, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Can you imagine that? A religious expert. He's going to test Jesus. He's going to test God. And Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him, do this and you will live. The man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Well, we've answered that. Everyone. Everyone is your neighbor, and that's who we need to try to be Jesus to. Now, that's not always easy. It may not always be safe, but in the best manner that you possibly can, let's try to treat everyone as our neighbor. Number four point today, Jesus commands us to love the Lord your God With all of your heart, your soul, your strength, and your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And you think, well, that's pretty simple. Love God with all your heart, all your soul, your being, your strength, and your mind. With everything that you do, everything that you think. Man, it gets a little bit tougher when you start really dialing down and thinking about how can I do that? How can I be a creature that truly loves God all that way. And sometimes we stumble, sometimes we fail, sometimes we fall. But how do we do that? And then you add on top of that, loving your neighbor as yourself. And sometimes our neighbor is not always lovely. Our neighbor is not always somebody that we just want to run up and give a big old bear hug, huh? Because things that happen in life and personalities and offenses that go on. So that can be a pretty tough thing to satisfy the commandments if you think about trying to do that. And you may think in your own heart, Am I there, God? Do I love you with all that I am? Do you look at your check register? Do you look at your credit card receipts? you look at the different things in your life that you make a priority? you look at your prayer life? you look at the amount of time that you may spend in this? Because this is the love letter that he's written to us, all 66 books of it, that he's given us for instruction, to edify us, to build us up to help us to be equipped to do what he's called and created us to do. Because, yeah, I'm up here preaching the sermon today, but each and every one of you have a purpose. You have a plan. You have a calling upon your life that God has given you talents and abilities to serve in the kingdom. So how much time do you spend with him? How much prayer time? How much Bible time? What are you doing to grow, to be a better disciple of Jesus Christ? Not that we're going to earn any salvation. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about... Just how do we make it through this life with all the bandits, with all the attacks, with all the issues that happen daily? I can't do it apart from this word. I can't do it apart from that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We want that eternal life. That's that's the end game result, isn't it? We want to, when we lay down these earth suits, each and every one of us, we've got a short amount of time on this planet. If we live to be 120, that's what we're limited to. According to the word of God, that's still a short amount of time to be here. And then we've got eternity, which my mind has a hard time comprehending. I have a hard time thinking about eternity. What is that going to be like? How are we going to spend 
all that time. I don't know exactly, but I do know if I'm going to be there with Jesus. It's going to be a good place to be, amen? That's going to be something that we're going to enjoy. And having new bodies that don't hurt, new bodies that have no sickness, no problems, no issues, no sadness, no sorrow. And that's what we have to look forward to. That's the promise that we look forward to as Christians. But there's more to it than just that. Let's look at James chapter 2. If you want to really dig into the book of James, there's a great, great things that you can find out in there, and it can really convict you. It can push you in your Christian walk. Verses 8 through 13, James says, Yes, indeed, it is good when you obey the royal law as found in the Scriptures. Love your neighbor as yourself. James is talking about what Jesus said. But if you favor some people over others, you're committing a sin. You're guilty of breaking the law. Like the folks that wandered by the guy that was dressed sort of casually, if not homeless looking, as he was lying there, versus the ones that came rushing right over when the guy in the suit and tie fell down. If we're looking at people in a little bit different way and we're, we're judging them based upon what they look, that's saying that that's a sin. You're guilty of breaking the law. For a person who keeps all the laws except one is as guilty as a person who has broken all of God's laws. For the same God who said you must not commit adultery also said you must not murder. So if you murder someone but do not commit adultery, you have still broken the law. So whatever you say or whatever you do, remember that you will be judged by the law that sets you free. There will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. But if you have been merciful, God will be merciful when he judges you. There's several things you can see in there is that we are all guilty. We have all, if you've broken one, you, you, the same has broken all of the laws. And thank God it's not based upon what I do. It's based upon what he did 2,000 years ago on that cross of Calvary. And his blood that he shed that I accepted for my sins wipes them away. And that's the great news. That's the great news of the gospel. But then we should still, even as Christians, we should grow in that mercy gift. We should show mercy to others so that we can have more mercy shown to us. I know I need mercy on a daily basis. I need the mercy of God upon my life because we've all broken at least one law. Probably this week, maybe some of us this morning, we have sinned and we have fallen short. For all have done that. We're all guilty. We all deserve judgment. We all deserve that condemnation. But thank God we don't receive it because Jesus took it. But our works do matter. Let's look at James 2, 14 through 20. And that's why I always talk about what are you doing for the kingdom? What were you created to do? What gifts, talents, and abilities do you have? James says, what good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but you don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? I suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say goodbye and have a good day, stay warm and eat well, but then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does it do? So if we're sitting here with brothers and sisters in Christ and you see somebody hungry and they say, I'm hungry, and you guys go to lunch and you say, God bless you, and you don't take them, you don't give them any food, you don't help them, what good does that do is what James is saying. So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. Faith without works is dead. Now someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. You say you have faith for you believe there is one God? Good for you. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. How foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? And your fifth and final point today. Do you show your faith by your good deeds? I'm all about grace. I'm all about mercy. I'm all about forgiveness. That's the great news of the gospel. But Jesus didn't only bring grace. He didn't only bring forgiveness. He brought truth. And he brought the truth of the word of God. And it's for us to obey it. It's for us to go out and do what we can do to make a difference in this lost and dying world. To find those people that are in the ditch. To help pull them up. To help make a difference when we can. Like I said earlier, I can't help everybody, but I can help some people. So I just want you to think about that. What are you doing in the kingdom? What are you doing as a Christian, as a disciple of Jesus Christ? It's more than praying a prayer. It's more than being baptized. It's more than just making that decision. As a matter of fact, you can make that decision in your mind and be just like the demons. The demons believe and they tremble, we just read in the book of James. That's a scary verse. There's more to it than just belief. 
There's confession, there's belief. Yes, that's a starting point. That's where we begin our journey as disciples of Jesus Christ. That's when we start working out our salvation with fear and trembling, as the Bible tells us. But if we stop there and we have no works, faith without works is dead. So do you have that faith? Have you made that decision? Our church does it. We feed people. We clothe people. We make a difference from here to Africa and all the way around. But what are you doing? Are you a part of that? Are you plugged in or you just come and you sit, you hear a few songs, you hear a sermon, and you go home without doing anything else for the kingdom? We need you. We need you here at Severeville First. If you're not plugged in, if you're not doing things in the kingdom, and you may think, David, I can't do anything. Well, sure you can. Can you shake a hand? Can you smile at somebody? Can you be friendly? Can you make a pot of coffee? I mean, every Sunday morning we got coffee back here. we got something going on where people can be encouraged. You don't have to come up and stand up and preach a sermon. You don't have to have the talent that we have on the stage with people that sing and praise God. But what I am going to ask you to do today, I just want you to bow your head and close your eyes. Do you have that genuine faith in Jesus Christ today? Christian, or what's the Holy Spirit telling you today? He's inside of us. If you truly accepted Christ, if you've asked for forgiveness of your sins, if you confessed and you believe in your heart and your mind, what's he saying to you today, this first Sunday of 2019? I just want you to be obedient. I was last week, I shared with the church and both services about my health issues and what's going on with me. Just, I just felt like God wanted me to do that so that the church could pray for me. And I believe that I'm going to be able to give him the praise, the honor, and the glory and healing in whatever situation that he allows that to walk out in my life. And then I believe we'll all be edified by that because we'll see the power of prayer. What's going on in your life today physically, relationally? emotionally, spiritually, or financially, do you need prayer for something? This altar is going to be open in a few moments. I'll be at the front. I'd love to pray with you. I'll stay to the last person leaves today if you need prayer. But maybe you're here today. Maybe you're watching online, and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you've got a head knowledge. Maybe you're like the demons. You believe, but you've never surrendered. You're not a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Prayer, prayer like this, if that's you and you feel God knocking on the door of your heart, say, Father God, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart that, God, you raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. From this day forward, I'll serve and follow you. If you prayed that prayer, that's a beginning. That's a start. Make sure that you're plugged into a Bible-believing church. Make sure that you get into the Word, that you are studying to show yourself approved. Don't walk alone. There's too many bandits. There's too much bad stuff in this world. We need each other. If you have a need today, please come. We're going to sing our closing song. Everyone just stand and let's worship God. I'm here if you need prayer. Say the name. Can't find the word.
pray for you. You'll be dismissed. Father God, I just thank you for this opportunity to share the good news of the gospel. God, let us all go forth and share that good news, share the mercy and the love and the grace and the hope and the forgiveness that we can find in Jesus Christ. But God, let us go forth also and let our faith not be without works. God, let us reach out to a lost and dying world. Let us pick those up out of the ditch like the good Samaritan did, God, to make a difference in every opportunity where we can. God, just speak to us clearly move among us. Keep us safe. Bring us back together again next week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Through you I can do anything And I can do all things Cause it's you who gives me strength Nothing is impossible Through you kind eyes are rolling